What is Hexagear? Kotobuki's line of mecha model kits and 3-inch minifigure kits known as Governors, which rock an absolutely savage style. For the most part, the mecha kits are based on animals somewhat similar to Zoids, but I'll talk about them another time. Today I'll be checking out one of the 3 inch minifigure kits and this badass beefy twin gatling gun wielding beast is the Governor Parapon Expander. This is an awesome little kit like nothing I've ever built before. Let's check it out. Hey what is up everyone, welcome back to another model kit review and today I'm taking a look at something a little bit different and something I've been meaning to look at for a long time long time, and that of course are Kotobukiya's Hexagear kits. So today I'm just going to start with one of the governors. This one right here is the Parapon Expander, and once again as usual this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want some Hexagear kits of your own, then check out that link down there in the description. Now let's get to this. So that right there is what the Parapon Expander looks like out of the box and put together. And before I actually get into the model kit itself, I do want to introduce the line a little bit because, well, I've never featured them on the channel before, even though I've meant to since they came out. For those of you who don't know, I used to live in Japan over a year and a half ago, but moved away because of reasons and whatnot. But these came out just before I left and really showed, I guess, the kind of sad state of affairs my life was in at the time that I didn't even bother trying these out when I saw them in Yellow Submarine. I just looked at them, looked at the price, and just kind of didn't feel like it. Which sucks. That was well over a year and a half ago, so this is way too late because these are some awesome looking kits. Basically, the premise behind these is You've got your 3 inch minifigures, which are the governors, look like this right here, there's a bunch more, there, 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 and there, and then the mecha that they can pilot. Which for the most part are based on animals and stuff, which makes sense because Kotobukiya used to make Zoids. And some of these have a very familiar aspect to them, like this wolf guy here, an even newer one that's coming out pretty soon that looks so damn cool. And besides that we've got pretty much anything else you could think of. Bulls, dragons, squids, crabs, insects, and all of them look so awesome. So for today, I'm just going to be taking a look at the governor first. Hopefully soon, I'll take a look at some of those awesome mecha that they can pilot. So there is the Parapon Expander out of the box and put together. And you can see why I went for this guy first. This is so badass. Seeing this guy here, as well as the bulk arm kit, which looks absolutely and utterly awesome, is what got me re-interested in these. So I went for this guy here. I will mention this is what it looks like out of the box. It looks incredible. The eyes are already painted. A lot of the parts like the hands, the torso, all of that, they are made out of a flexible material. They're kept in separate little bags inside the box. Those don't have to be built per se, just cut out. And as for the model kit kind of building aspect itself, this came on nine little runners and took next to no time to put together whatsoever. And it was an extremely fun, unique build. Just like I mentioned with the torso, this isn't necessarily a model kit part, it's more like a molded rubber section. There's a quick look at what it looks like disconnected from him. This is a really cool, unique way to kind of maintain a little bit, very little bit of articulation while not really segmenting up a lot of the details. Pretty cool. And before I go any further with this review, I should mention the most obvious aspect about this kit. If you saw it in person, which may not be so apparent right now in the video, but it's tiny. And I mean, tiny. As in, really tiny. This thing is only 3 inches tall. So that does make it essentially like a 3 inch minifigure. The closest things I would have to compare this to would be B25's awesome little Acid Rain World figures. Those are 2.5 inches tall. And this right here which is Joy Toys, not Titanfall, minifigure. But if I compare it to other things like a high grade Gundam, a master grade Gundam, or even a perfect great Gundam, you can see this thing is quite small. So moving straight into the accessories and there's the Parapon Expander with everything that it comes with. And if this guy wasn't badass enough already, because seriously this thing is badass, what could make it more badass? Well a pair of swords with Gatling guns on it. Yeah, this thing is so cool. So this little guy is packing an awesome little set of accessories. So what we do have in here, first off as for hands, we have a grand total of six hands that's fists, a pair of widespread open hands as well as a pair of holding hands. These are flexible rubber, just have to be chopped off the runners. Next up we have an awesome little set of revolvers. This is quite cool. I love when things have big weapons, but I love it even more when they've got pistols. When these aren't in use we've got a pair of attachment points which can stick onto the sides of the legs, they can slot in there. 
We have this backpack which slots into that hexagear slot round there on the back. And of course the absolute main event in here are those absolutely epic looking Gatling gun swords. So these can be held in two different ways. They can be held as swords using this handle back here, held as Gatling guns using the handle round on the bottom. We also have a secondary handle up on top. And as you can see, these have a drum on them already so they can be used just like this. Or we have these big long ammo belts which can flip round to the backpack. These are made out of a flexible material so you can still get whatever pose you want out of this when you want it. All in all, this is a seriously badass little figure with some badass accessories. Almost forgot to mention we do get a little art card in the box as well. That is what it looks like. Pretty cool. And of course the main thing to use these for is for using with the Hexagear Mecha. Around here on the back of the box you can see it up on that awesome bull. So hopefully soon I'll be taking a look at one of those. And I have to say I am looking forward to that. So now moving into the build and the articulation on this guy and let's give it the good old patented Mecha Guy Kotsu stress test. Because if you've been on this channel for any length of time whatsoever, you know if whoa, something can be broken, it will be broken. So let's check out that build. And the articulation. Ooh, starting early with this one. Okay, so the first thing I'll have to mention right here is this waist joint could be a whole lot stronger. And this is a waist joint I'm seeing a lot of issues with lately. Not just with kits like this, but also with a lot of Bandai's Gunpla as well. Both the high-grade Leo as well as the high-grade GBN base Gundam have this ball and open socket like this. It isn't a tight socket that clicks in, it's just open. So. As you move it, it just slides off of it. It doesn't hold in in any particular way. So I guess they're trading off some stability for a little bit more articulation. But anyway, we'll get to that when we get to that. So first off, at the neck, you can see there that it doesn't... This thing's a bit delicate. Okay, okay, breathe in. Use your finesse. <laughs> but anyway, it is just a standard single ball and socket there. And because he's got such a big gas mask head and he's got those big shoulders... Which, by the way, the detailing on there is really nice. It looks like ropes. Kind of gives that kind of Oni vibe. So there it is side to side. So not a crazy amount. There it is up and down. So as long as you're careful with it, you will get a little bit out of it, but not a whole lot. Inside the torso there, you can see we've got a little bit of forward and back for the shoulder. But nothing too crazy there. A little bit. There is the arm all the way up, so to get more out of that, you'll have to rotate that around, and that does rotate 360 degrees. On this ball, it can also spin like so. There is the bend at the elbow, so you're getting your standard 90 degrees there. At the midway point, we do have some rotation there. Standard ball and socket at that wrist. Out it comes. Use your finesse. At the waist here, we can get a little bit of back, mainly. So there's what we can get to the back. To the front, not much. So mainly just that little bit to the back. The belt here is just kind of hanging on there. It can slot into place, but it usually comes loose. There is the kick up to the front. Again, just parallel to the ground. As for that kick out to the back, once again, parallel to the ground. And can he pull off the splits? Nope, that is as far as his legs will go out to the sides. Because of the design of the upper leg there, you can see all that armor coming all the way around. When this is attached, you do get a rotation there, but just from there to there. But that's all you'd really need. Outside of that, it would be abnormal human motion, I guess. So there is the bend at the knee. So once again, that is just beyond 90 degrees. And no, that leg was never on backwards. How dare you accuse me of such things? And as for the ankle, then we've got up, down, side to side pivot and that foot can rotate all the way around and off but anyway it can rotate all the way around so all in all for a guy this size for something so small the articulation on this is quite decent so that is it for the review and what can i say i am impressed and this is a line i want to see more of i know about you guys but i love minifigures three inch minifigures are awesome so much fun so compact so small and it's even better when you can use them with mecha of some description. And that is exactly what I intend to do. I want to take a look at some more of these Hexagear kits. Especially the bigger, crazier ones. As well as that awesome looking bulk arm. That thing looks so cool. But anyway, if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. I'm not going to rate these guys just yet because I don't really have a basis to rate them on. As usual, if you do want to see more videos of this style, hit that like button so I know. And of course, make sure to come back for more model kit reviews. See you next time.